Welcome, 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 guys. Coming in, coming in. Let's go ahead and jump in to all of these wonderful games that were submitted uh, earlier today. I want to make sure that the stream is good, though, good and healthy here. We, we saw some lag earlier, and I want to make sure everybody's good. So I'm going to take a look at the chat here and see if everybody is good with this stream. Is everybody okay so far with the stream quality? And by the way, before we jump in, guys, before we jump in, I want to let you know, if you want to support not only if you want to support not only the studio and the games that me and my team create, but also support your future, um, I can honestly say 2D Art Pro is an incredible program that you could check you should check out. There's just 3 days left, you're going to get 50% off. If you want to learn 3D, if you want to learn 3D, check out 3D Art Pro, okay? Links below. Or you can get both 50% off, okay? Three days left, click below, select 2D Art Pro. For example, if you're interested in 2D Art Pro, you're going to learn everything I've learned in the last, frankly, I think 15 years of my career doing 2D Art. Um, what's cool about my programs is I'm actually making games, guys. I actually make games and I also find time to make YouTube content. And I make games that actually sell, right? I make commercial games. We're working on a third commercial release right now. I have over a thousand students worldwide, incredible reviews. It really is an incredible course. So be sure to check it out. You're gonna learn Photoshop, all these different things here, landscapes, interiors, serious landscapes, multiple player styles, more of a cartoony style as well. Multiple enemy styles, pixel art, there's workbooks, there's downloads. It's incredible. So be sure to check that out, guys. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you about the first game, one of the first games that was submitted to me today. Okay, that is Soul Drifter. Okay, Soul Drifter does something right um, that a lot of the games that were submitted to me don't really do very well so soul drifter is sort of our standard okay and this is from vision keeper studios okay by the way how's the stream is the stream okay guys everybody feel good about the stream just check in the chat check in the chat welcome jack and just a game developer honest dev game always good to have you here side run, uh, side room games oh man we're getting bad bad camera lag what about the uh, what about the actual screen? Is the screen okay? Still good? Okay, good guys. All right, seems good. Okay, so Soul Drifter does something very, very good here. Soul Drifter is focusing on brand, okay? Not the studio's brand. Vision Keeper, I'm sure they have a wonderful studio brand. The brand of the game. You need to think of your game like, I don't know, if you, if you, were, if you were McDonald's or you were Apple, okay? You want to create a brand that is distinct and unique from all other games. So when I look at Soul Drifter, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, what does it scream? Okay, it screams color. It, it screams cleanliness. It's very stylish because we can see sketches, right? We can see sketchy hand drawn, uh, a, a hand drawn shader, and we're focused on two complementary colors. We've got teal and yellow. Teal and yellow are gonna dictate everything else about this game. Sure, you might have a little bit of red, right? Or more vibrant yellows and dark brown, but overall, your color scheme sticks to this color. It doesn't mean you always have to use the exact same colors. You can branch off, but when you're presenting your game to the world, you want it to have a very distinct brand, okay? So, Soul Drifter, is our standard. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you a game that looks beautiful, okay? It, was, it, it really does look good, but it's not doing exactly what Soul Drifter is doing, okay? So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop here and let's talk about this game here, okay? Looks great, looks very, very good. However, let's open it up here. One sec, let's open up the actual Steam page. Okay. One sec, guys. I'm going to open this up here. There it is. Downy Flake. Looks great, but there's definitely some work to be done here. Okay? So Downy Flake is doing something. Yes, the brand, the brand is, is there, meaning the colors all make sense and they're consistent, but the problem is it's actually going a little too far. Okay? So Soul Drifter, yes, beautiful, unique colors, but it stays, it stays focused on a brand. 
whereas downy flake goes a little too hard in the monochromatic monochromatic direction. Okay, so you can actually still have a blue game, but make it look a little bit more beautiful. Okay, so here's an example. Let's open up Photoshop and think about okay, what what could we do to make this look a little bit more eye-catching? Well, first off, I think it's a little too saturated. So this is just a sort of subjective opinion, but I think it's a little too saturated, so we could drop it down. Okay, good. That already looks better to me. But certain colors will be saturated, okay? You don't want to go, here's the thing about saturation. You want contrast in saturation, okay? So an example is, let's pretend there's a window here. This, you could potentially do a high saturation color. Okay, something like this. Do an outer glow. And by the way, guys, what I'm doing right now is what I do with my actual team, right? When I'm, when I'm art directing a project, I spend the majority of my time in Photoshop talking to that camera, having meetings, okay? So what I'm doing right now is what I do with my team. Let's increase the spread here, drop it down, Let's just put a little line here just to make it look like a window. I'm just showing what this could be, okay? How we can make this look more beautiful. Already, already, we have something that's a little bit more eye-catching. Why? Because we're doing what Soul Drifter did, which is complementary colors. Complementary colors make a big, big difference. Okay, here's another example, watch. Watch this. We could put a spotlight here. Run it along the ground. We'll do a motion blur. And oftentimes, guys, when I'm doing this, I'm not telling my team exactly what they need to do. I'm just showing them this is what it could be. I was talking to one of my team members, Felipe, today, and he and I agreed. Um, one, of the, one of the most valuable assets in game creation and art creation for your games is simply the ability to identify when something looks bad and what needs to be done to make it look better. Not necessarily exact steps, but the, the end result. If I can see the finish line of like, no, 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 it could be this, then I know that there needs to be something done here, okay? So oftentimes, most of us in our mind's eye, we cannot identify what it could look like. We just can't see past that. Now, I can, so I can see what this should look like. So if I take this, I can see a light here, okay? And this is all, this was in my head the moment I saw this. I was like, this is what we could do. And that's just with practice. That's just with practice, okay? Lighting is huge, lighting is huge. Watch this. Um, we could take, do a highlight here. We could actually do a full this and then, Casting shadows is a big deal. Okay, this is this can all be done um, inside of. Uh, I'm I'm gonna assume that this was made in Unity or Unreal. Okay, you could do both. In both, you could just cast shadows. Okay. Okay, something like that, and then one more. Watch this. Volumetrics. Okay, so I'm gonna simulate volumetrics right now. Okay, we're gonna simulate volumetrics. And for those of you who stick around for the entire video, I genuinely believe you're gonna learn so much from this video. And I'm being genuine, I really believe that. I believe that um, I have a lot to offer you here. Okay, so look, we simulate volumetrics here, a little bit of bloom, like that, okay. It's good to zoom out and go, okay, is there enough yellow? I don't think there is. So I'm gonna very subtly add some yellow here, some volumetrics, okay? One final thing here, why not create a shift in color as we're coming towards the camera, right? Here's how you do it in 3D. In 3D, the way you create a shift or a gradient of color is it's fog, okay? So there's a global fog value, what I would do is I would make the global fog value a different color than the lighting, okay? So yes, we have a bunch of blue moon lit lighting, but if we made 
if we made the, the, the moonlit lighting more teal and then actually blend it into that blue, you'd get a shift from teal to, per to blue, okay? So I'm gonna do a colorization here. We do a little bit of a tealish blue. And we're just gonna try and mimic this here. Okay. Again, we're working with 2D here. But see how we're doing some subtle changes in color, okay? So that's, that's an example of how we can make this more eye-catching, okay? Again, we're working with a 2D screenshot here, so we're doing our best. Um, this is what it looked like originally. Now look, do you guys see the difference? Now, what are we doing here? There's, there's okay, so everything's like a yin and yang um, in artwork, whether it's 2D or 3D. Contrast is your best friend. You want to complement everything. Okay, for example, um, we're contrasting saturation. Okay, this is, let me just take a pencil here. This is low saturation. Let's zoom in and see. Look how low saturation that is. What's saturation? It's density of color. Like, it could be this, right? Look how insane the density is here. It's so, so saturated. We grade it out. Why? So that we had the opportunity to create some contrast. The moment you put a full saturation filter over your entire game, you have no opportunity for, for contrast. You're stuck. You've sort of block, uh, locked yourself into a, a specific level of saturation. So we decrease saturation so that we can create more saturation here. Look how saturated that is. So that's contrast of what? Saturation. But then we also can create contrast in color, right? So now we have these two colors. Look how pretty they look together. Let me show you. We have this color here. I'm gonna do on the left side. I'm just gonna show you how pretty this is. This color. And then we've got this color here. Look at these two colors, complemented colors. It looks even better. If colors look good just as big squares, you've already won, okay? Color's your best friend. Look at that. Do you see what we did here, guys? This was all in my head. This, this coloring here was in my head the moment I started this, okay? And this isn't me bragging, but none of this was practiced. I just hit, hit Let's go live and let's try it out. The reason I knew what to do is because I've been doing this for 15 years. We want com 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 contrast and saturation. We've got it. Okay. We've got contrast and color. We've got it. Two opposite colors. And then finally, you could do a full global shift. Okay. So, for example, if I go to, let's say, this teal color here. You can have that, that shift, especially in these colors here. Suddenly it looks really, like it's this really interesting gradient. So we're getting all these different complements and shifts, but they're all, they're all correlated, they're a family, okay? Now, really quick, let's talk about logos. If your intention, I'm gonna drop that down though, that's a little too much, there we go. Um, if you oh yeah, that's what it was, there we go. Um, if your intention, was to make some sort of 70s looking font, that's fine, but topography is really, really important. If you wanted to make a more serious, serious toned game, I would, I would go with a serif font, okay? So I would do this. Let's talk about fonts really quick. I would do, and I don't like true white, especially in this moody stuff, so we're gonna do a, uh, an off-white. There we go. There we go, okay? All right, and by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember, if you wanna learn more about 2D art and you wanna learn more about 3D art, it does support the channel. Guys, the reason why, I, and it's 50% off below um, the, my, my 2D art course. Uh, the reason why I do these ad reads is because it does support the channel, okay? Um, it supports us as we continue to create content for you guys and also uh, new games. So check that out below, but obviously it does support you as well. And if you're in the program, if you're in 2D Art Pro right now or 3D Art Pro, let us know in the chat. Um, let's see if we can find a really sweet font here. 
Ooh, serif. Watch, I love serif fonts. Look at this. Watch this. Small and separate. I just love that stuff. Okay, guys, so that's what we've got. Okay. This is what we've got currently. I'm gonna merge all this to end. Why don't I just let's throw in some bloom and some noise? Okay, that's what we've got currently, and this is what it was. So if you guys are ever in a situation where somebody says, "Yeah, I don't, I don't like how your game looks," or "It's ugly," it's actually just a few steps away from being beautiful. You just have to follow some rules. Okay, so this is the final result. Look at that, guys. Look. Isn't that crazy? Okay. All right, so watch, I can add a little bit of a bloom here and then we'll move on to the next project. There we go. Drop it down, so now we have some bloom. It's really soft now. I freaking love that. And then throw in some noise as well. Look at this, guys. It's hard to see on your screen, so I'm gonna make it really intense, um, just so you can get a, a flavor here. So how many of you can hear music when you see this? How many of you can hear sound? How many of you can smell it? Can any of you smell the snowflakes? See, I'm being dead serious. Look, write, write down smell, see, I'm, I'm sorry, smell or hear, if you can hear it right now, if you can hear the music or the sound effects. Can anybody hear it? Okay, Samuel Games can hear it. Yep. Good, it's a census test. That's, that's, a, that's a great term. If you can feel it, you did it right. So if you can smell it, if you can hear it, if you could taste it, you could taste the snow. If I could, I could smell the wood smoke coming from that cabin. That is, a, that is a sign that you did it right. Now it's no slight against the previous art because clearly we had plenty to work with, okay? But I can't smell this. Okay? I can't smell this, mainly because it doesn't look real. Okay, This I can smell. So there's Downy Flake. I'm going to go ahead and email that. If I have some time here, email that to the developer. Okay, it's called Synesthesia. Very good. Awesome. Okay, guys, let's move on. Corrupted Lake. This is from Brian of Side 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 Rum Side Rum Games. It's called Knox. And Knox, there's plenty to work with here. Um, we're gonna see if we can separate out the layers. Um, but what I want to do is, and by the way, uh, there was no Steam page that was sent, so this is just a screenshot. Brian, we have we have plenty to work with here. Okay. So what I first want to do is establish the proper, the proper coloring, okay? You're not following rules here, and I want to teach you about the rules. First off, your sky should never be the most saturated thing. That's the first rule. Again, let's create some desaturation. Guys, why is it a problem that when everything's saturated? Can anybody remember from the previous, uh, the previous example? Why do we not use full saturation for everything? Does anyone know the rules? Okay. We want, that's right, Sheba, there is no contrast. We don't have contrast of saturation. And we also want to create depth. Depth is created with saturated content, uh, contrast. Okay. Here's an example. That's purple. Okay. Let's go ahead and think. What, what color do we want the... Um, the mountains to be. Well, let's just go full, much higher saturation. Let's go darker too. And maybe shift towards blue. Okay? When you're coming towards the camera, several things shift. It gets more saturated, it gets darker, and it shifts its hue. So we're going to just pull, look at, look at what I just did. Went darker, more saturated, and shifted the hue. Okay? But we also want that green, right? So the green is gonna be a nice contrasted color. So this is a great opportunity to throw in some vibrant green. I'm gonna pick a different green. Kelly green, that's what this is. This sort of Kelly green doesn't look good with purple, in my opinion. 
you got to give it a little bit more of a yellow. So throw some yellow in and then suddenly you got yourself almost like a joker green. Look at that. Look at the difference in color. Okay, guys, we've got these three colors. And then we'll throw in the other colors just to show why it is I'm changing the colors. Okay. Does, it, does everybody see the difference here? Does everybody see why I'm going to choose the left side and not the right side? The left side gives us a shift in hue between this purple to this blue. It gives us a shift in lightness. It gives us a, a, the ability to pop and create contrast. Okay? So I'm going to choose the left color. Okay? Now let's figure out what these rules are. Okay, what are the rules? Well, the rules are, rules are important. We talked about this yesterday during the live stream. It's super duper important. Um, hold on one sec here. It's super duper important to establish rules for yourself. Here are our rules. This is our sky. So these are the colors we get to choose for our sky and the mountains as we come forward. This right here, I'm pointing at my screen. <laughs> That right there is the color of the grass. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit. That's the, the color of the ground that the player can walk on. I'm going to go a little bit more yellow, actually. Now that I'm seeing it, I'm like, you know, it could be probably a little bit more yellow. Look at how cool this looks by just shifting it with a little bit more yellow. Whoa, look at that. Beautiful. This is what it was. This is what it can be. Whoops, that didn't save. Hold on. This is what it can be. Add a little bit of yellow in there. Color theory is your best friend. Okay, guys? All right, let's merge those together. And we're going to use this as our color palette. And we're just going to show Brian really quick how simple this is. Again, Brian, you have something special here. You have some really beautiful artwork, but it's not colored correctly. So I need you to recolor it. It's that simple. You don't need to redo the assets. Just recolor it, and I'll show you how we can do it. Okay. And it's not perfect because I don't have a layered. Um, file, but let's just let me just show you really quick what I mean here. I'm going to just use circles really quick. It's going to this this might if you haven't seen this yet, guys, this might blow your mind. Because I showed my, my yesterday's stream this. Uh, if, but if you haven't seen this, it's really cool. Look what's happening. Okay, we're just following these rules. Coming forward, coming forward, coming forward. Oh, look at these. I guess we could assume these are like trees. I'm doing this really quick just to make prove a point, guys. Okay. This is our grass. Wait. Oh, look at that. Oh. Wait, let's do some foreground as well. Isn't that cool? If I zoom out, it almost looks real. It looks like an actual landscape, okay? You know, or like a real photograph. So that's why we're being so careful with color. You can make it even look better. I always do this. I always, always do this. I'll add a little pop of a horizon, watch what happens. It's gonna, it's gonna go from looking like just a foggy day to actually a sky. Three, two, one. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I mean, you could even, you could even uh, throw in some, some again, off-white. I like off-white clouds. So it's really that, uh, that simple here. Delete this. If I merge all this together, you can see the difference in quality. This looks like it's got actual distance, right? Um, whereas this, it's like, wait a second. Why is that sky so, so purple? Okay. So let's try and figure out the solution here. Um, let's see if we can uh, uh, apply it to, to our current artwork. The way we would do this, this is gonna be really rough, guys, so please forgive me for, for not being super precise here. Um, but we're just gonna try and grab some, some of these mountains here. 
Okay, paste that, grab these trees. And what you can do is like make them black and white. Yeah, this is gonna be really rough, I'm sorry guys. But I just wanna get to the other projects. But you can make them black and white and uh, Sorry, I'm just thinking here how to do this the best way. You can make them black and white and colorize them. It's, this is going to be messy. Uh, that's, I think, I, think I'm, I'll, I can try it. It's not going to look good, but I can try it. Um, so there's our colors here. At the very least, we can do a color overlay just to prove a point. Color overlay that. Uh, color overlay this here. This is our grass. Mm-hmm. Color overlay this. So it's all about following those colors, right? And then color overlaying our trees. That, that needs to go behind this, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, color overlay this here. There we go. And then what's this? Where is that? Hang on. Oh, that's that background image. Uh, and then the sky in the background here. Okay. Color overlay this. Just creating some, oh, look, look, look. Let's grab the mountains here. Yeah, I think it'll look, it'll look, it'll look good enough to prove a point. <laughs> um, so let's see here. There we go. So color, I mean, color just is a huge, there's just a huge advantage to color. So generally, I mean, your shapes are fine. Um, we just need to create depth, you know. Um, it's really that simple. I would, I would consider throwing in some clouds as well, uh, like this. And you, you've got more of an angular look, so we're not going to use circles. Um, but yeah, it's all about understanding the rules of the real world and abstracting them down as you create something. 3D Printer Academy, welcome, welcome. Um, what about different styles? What do you mean? I mean, the, we're, the rules we're following aren't really necessarily stylistic decisions. They're just good rules to follow in general. Um, you can use it for anything. Um, so, um, if it, like for example, like we've got um, this right here, which has a color overlay. It's got texture all over it. So what you would do is you would just match, you would just colorize it and match it, you know? Um, so you could follow these, these rules, um, you know, for, for any texture style or anything like that. I just don't have a layered PSD, so I can't really work with this. Um, but there you go. There you go, guys. Okay, so that is, what it, this is what it could look like in terms of just the very generic coloring, okay? That's what it could look like. And um, this is what it is. A really good rule of thumb is if you zoom out and you can't figure out what it is, it's not following good rules. It's like, what, is, that a, is that like a purple jelly over the sky? I don't know what that is. Or maybe it kind of looks like a caterpillar in front of like a purple wall. But that, I can look at that and go, oh, I think that's a landscape. I think that's a landscape. Now, anytime you see vibrant color like this, automatically assume, go, okay, there's a reason it's vibrant. Everything else is gray. Why? Why is that vibrant? Well, how do we justify? It looks cool, but how do we justify the weather pattern, right? The way we justify it is we say, okay, maybe there's a harsh, harsh sunlight hitting down really hard. So what you do is you take various objects in the background, and then you create hard shadows, like this, right? And then you can skew them. And guys, I'm giving you the simplest abstract shapes for a reason. Because if you can do it abstractly, then you can do it with detailed stuff. Or like you, like you mentioned, 3D Printer Academy, with texture. But as long as you have a good idea, 
So now that looks like sun is hitting down and creating those vibrant pops. Okay. All right, moving forward here, we've got the downy flake. We've got corrupted. What is this called? I can't remember what what was what was this. It was um. I would like to. Oh, uh, it's Knox. Okay, so Knox. I would do like a pixel font. I wonder if I have one. I don't think I do. That's cool. I like that font. That's sick. That's what I would do. Nice and clean. And why not do a vibrant pop? Ooh, what if we do this? Knox. And like, it's so easy to make a, a logo look interesting, guys. So instead of like trying to struggle with what exactly your logo should be and coming up with this crazy idea, just fill in the zero and there you go. <laughs> or the O, it's not a zero. You know, there's just so many things you can do to quickly make something look cool. Here's another example when it comes to logos, especially when you're at the very like prototypical, uh, the, pro the prototyping phase, there's no reason to, to, to get too creative because you're gonna change your logo. So just do this, you know, just cut that out there and you're like, oh, that looks cool, right? It's more than just a font. Or use noun project and say, okay, if Knox is let's say about space, then let's just do a, la let's find a laser gun on noun project and just do this. So most solutions, come on, where is it? Most solutions that are effective tend to be simple. Um, that's my rule. Um, and if, if something's not simple, then you better have a really good reason as to why you don't want it to be simple. Because most of the time, it should be simple. I don't know what I'm doing here, but something like that. Like a laser gun or something, Knox. Remember guys, be careful with color. Be very precise. You need to be like a surgeon with color. Um, something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I hate that. So that's good enough. Keep it simple, dummies. All right. So that's, that's, that's what we could do with Knox, okay? There's a uh, Downy Flake. Okay, this chess game was really sweet. I really liked it. Let me go ahead and open up this chess game. Uh, visually, I'm, I don't like it, but I love the concept. The concept is so cool. This is from Frogbert. Frogbert, congrats on understanding what a hook is. Um, it, it really looks good here. Um, Okay, so it's it's cool. It's like really cool. Um, what a great concept, seriously. Um, I'm trying to think in my mind's eye what I would do with this, these graphics. The big problem here is it's boring. The, the coloring, uh, by the way, when I talk about this being a cool hook, it's a chess game where you shoot each other. Um, the best hooks can be said in like four words. Chess game with guns. That's it. It's a, a great hook, chess game with guns. Uh, my hook for Twisted Tower, Willy Wonka meets Bioshock, right? Or Willy Wonka meets Bioshock. <laughs> and it's okay to use other games and IPs to create comparison, that's totally fine. The quicker and the, the, more, the, quicker, the better your hook is, I think. The quicker you can say it, the better your hook. So it's a great hook, it's just visually, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't really, I don't see visually any anything that's hooking me. So let me think here. Well, we need to create contrast for one. So let's use let's let's find our color scheme, okay? So I like this sort of muted yellow. We could do dark, dark, dark color. Um maybe a dark orange or just red. OK, 
good. Uh, let's just drop it down. We need to create, we need contrast between the board and the pieces. Right now we don't have that. Right now we've got a muddy mess. Okay. So let's create contrast between the board and the pieces. Okay. I like this. Okay. So right now all I'm doing guys is I'm just choosing my colors. I'm just choosing my colors. Let's create a pop of color. What's the pop of color? 100% orangish red. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> That's the, that definitely is going to be the color we choose here. Look at that. Look at that. Now we could, hey, just, be, just to be careful, let's see, okay, what happens if I do full, like very, well, almost black? That looks good. Okay, what if I do white? Do I have an opportunity to use white? Let's see. We do. And I would say, let's take this, uh, this darker color here and drop it down just a tad so there's the white really stands out. Okay, so that's our color scheme. Guys, pick your color scheme first, okay? That is the most important thing you can do in a game. Pick your color scheme first. All right, we've got our color scheme. Now let's go ahead and create the board. And by the way, when, guys, when I, when I do it in a very simplistic style, I'm not telling you or uh, the developer of this game, um, Frogbert, I'm not saying Frogbert, do it in my style. I, I'm doing it as quick as I can to show you what you can do with color. Okay, color is, is your best friend. I also see some bevels here, which I really like. So I'm, I'm totally down creating some, some very simplistic, clean bevels. So that's fine, let's do it. Um, so what you could do is, and, and when I say, when I'm talking about color, I'm saying this color is also effective from a game design perspective. We're not just creating something that looks cool, we're actually making something that's more effective, not only on the marketing side, but also so that I can see, and so that things really stand out, okay? And I understand you want to do pixel art and that's totally fine. For now, I'm just going to do simplistic, okay? There we go. All right, let's, let's figure out a, a checkerboard pattern. So again, this is the color of the checkerboard. And then let's do, what is a checkerboard? Is it uh, black and white, right? So let's just do this. But we want to, but Thomas, we want to do an actual checkerboard. Yeah, but we need to be able to see. We need to be able to, things to stand out, right? And so an actual checkerboard is black and white, yeah? Yeah? Okay, let's just keep going here. So I see no reason why we also don't want to create a gradient. Now, if it were me, I would do it in 3D and I would crop it, I would uh, do some perspective like this. Um, like that, I'm sorry. But again, we're not, we're not gonna change the game design. We're gonna try and work within the confines of what we've got. But I would, I would do like this. But uh, that's good enough. Okay, let's scale these down. We know what our colors are, but we just need to move them, make them smaller. Let's scale this up so it's nice and clean. Uh, we can shrink this down. Do you guys see the importance of color here? how suddenly it just looks more stylish. It's more eye-catching now. Okay. All right, the, the problem here is I wanna ask, uh, create those bevels too. So I'm actually gonna take these. Yeah, no, I got it, I got it. So let's, let's, let's jump forward actually. Here we go, okay, let's scale this down. Obviously I could have created a pattern, um, but whatever. Merge those together. Should have created a pattern. There we go. And subtlety is your best friend. Um, so when we create like bevels, um, you wanna be very, very subtle with how you're doing it, okay? So here's an example. I'm gonna take all these here, copy and paste them, and then just fill in that background solid. Okay. So the bevels, we could do something like this an inner shadow that's very subtle. Uh, 
I'm going to do a clean bevel, a clean inner shadow. No, that's not what I yeah, see here. Yeah, there's a little bit of pixelation happening on the on the corner there, but you guys get my drift. Okay, we can do one there and then an inner shadow on the other side, like this. Good. Look at that. Sweet. I'm going to copy that layer style and I'm going to fill in the, the uh, gaps here with a solid color here and then just duplicate it. Awesome. So now let's get, let's, let's increase that inner shadow on the right side though, that white. The reason why I like to choose off whites and I didn't just choose a white guys is because it now allows me to create highlights. Okay, so I can do a full-on highlight here, to and also that that darkness on the on the left side we need to increase here. Yeah, and I'm looking at the right screen here so I can see smaller sizes. I have a smaller uh, image on the on my right side so I can see it in the small. But that looks great. And look at how it looks with this red. That without the red, guys, without the red we got nothing. But now that we have this red. It's going to look great, okay? So you play as like the king, okay? And you're fighting a bunch of pawns, I guess. Um, I'm going to break some rules here when it comes to um, uh, chess. Uh, king chess. And I'm going to make it red, okay? Let's find one that we really like here. It needs to be sort of rounded. Ah, there we go. I like this one. But Thomas, you're cheating. You're using assets. That's okay. That's okay, guys. I'm paying a license for this stuff, and I can use it. Okay. So there's our king. I'm going to convert that to a smart object and do color overlay. So we can actually just create. a three-dimensional looking piece just by adding a little bit of a bevel. We could also create a sweet drop shadow. And again, guys, I'm not saying that, that the style here is what needs to be done. We can go for pixel art. We can do all of that. I'm really talking about color here. And if I was given the PSDs for these files, I would use the, the artwork we, they had, they had provided. Um, but I would incorporate these colors. So hopefully that makes sense. Really, we just want to do this. There we go. That's it. We don't want to skew. Okay, sweet. All right, so we got our king here. Um, we could also throw in a pawn. But Thomas, you're cheating. You're using assets. That's right. You bet I am. I'm a big fan of using assets. After, this is going to sound really pretentious, but after 10 years of doing stuff from scratch, I'm kind of done with assets. Or I'm done with doing everything from scratch. It's just kind of lame. So here are our pawns. And we're just going to color those. Follow the rules. Follow the rules, guys. Well, we didn't do use true black, did we, um, for the actual board? Why? So that the black pieces would stand out. That's why we did that. Okay. I can also do an inner shadow here. Do you guys see? Do you see why I'm choosing certain colors? It's giving me opportunity to to create contrast in all of our pieces. So it's good to have an idea of like, okay, what's the focus? Okay, the focus is the enemies and the player. Therefore, the enemies and the players should pop. They should stand out, right? Um, there you go, good. And then, hey, let's go ahead and just flip that upside down to create a little bit of a shadow piece or a shadow, shadow, um, just like this. And now, look at that. We could put a bunch of these all, actually, I'm not gonna do that. 
I'm going to uh, have a couple which are dead. Shadows are important, guys. Here's what I mean. A dead piece, if we put a shadow below it, suddenly it looks like it's actually on a surface. See? I guess you could say that's a reflection too. Right? Zoom in here, convert it to a smart object. And then we're going to just duplicate them. Dead, we got dead pieces all over. Transform, flip horizontal. Good. Let the chaos ensue. Good. Now, one final thing here we want to do. We can simulate depth, even though it is top down by just doing this, creating a nice dark gradient over top of everything. We could even make it overlay. So look at that guys, look, look, look. See that? Just very subtle, everything's subtle. Very good, okay. And what else can we throw in here? Okay, we've got bullets. I guess those are yellow bullets, right? So again, we use color. We use dim colors to allow for white. We could do white like this. Let's create a nice line. Nice, precise, clean line. Good. So we could do that. A little difficult to see, right? If that's the case, there's two options here. The first one is to do an outer glow that's orange. Same, remember, follow the rules. Follow the rules. We could do that. Or we could just do a color overlay of red, right? And then you could maybe do an outer glow of white to create some separation. But I preferred the other one. I preferred the outer glow. Mm -hmm. See? Just like that. Nice and clean. Oh look, we didn't duplicate the shadows. Watch how much big of a how much of a difference this makes. Check that out. Now it looks like the board is shiny. One more thing I wanted to do to the board. If you get anytime you can add just a little bit of texture to stuff, give it a go. Okay. Watch this. We're gonna do a little bit of a almost a, sh a shine. Set it to overlay. I don't know why that didn't do it. Hang on. Hmm. Where is the right color here? I want to do a little bit of a, maybe a, a yellowish color overlay. And then we're going to do one final, uh, that looks good actually right there. Um, we're going to do one, uh, I like that. And then just scale it down like that. And then we're going to do a hue shift, okay? So we can hue shift the entire board, okay? Okay, so we can hue shift to the blue, perhaps, like this. Mm. Maybe towards the red. Yeah, like that. Just a subtle shift, okay? It's very good, very good. So this is a simple use of color, okay? This is how I would use color. And you could put the 
How far down here? I, I think it's, uh, adding a stroke would be great. Again, off-white or full white because we have the off-white in the background. Nice and clean. So at its simplest form, at its simplest form, the colors now pop, everything pops. And that is the goal. That is the goal. Okay. That's about all we have time for. Frosty Rampage was cool. I was going to do that one. But that's all we have time for today, guys. Man, I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found some, some benefit in it. Um, does anybody have any quick questions? Um, does anybody have any quick questions that they want to run by? Feel free to write those in the chat. While you guys write your questions, again, just remember you can get 2DR Pro 50% off right now. So all that stuff we learned... You're going to learn so much more, including pixel art, multiple styles, interiors, landscapes, characters, all of that in this program, 2D Art Pro. You're going to get 50% off. Click the link below. Check it out. There's three days left to get 50% off. Join over 1,000 students, private Discord community, Photoshop, cartoony landscapes, interior, serious landscapes, multiple player styles, multiple enemy styles, pixel art, downloads. And hey, just for the sale event, guys, I'm going to throw in a free course. It's called Stream My Game. It's how you can get streamers to play your game. So for example, there is a method on how you can get someone like Jacksepticeye to play your game or Matt Pat, and I've done both. It wasn't that I just sent them my game. I actually incentivized it and I teach you how to do it. So you're gonna get that completely free, but only for the sale event. Let's jump into these questions, guys. What do we got? What kind of questions do we have? Okay. Yellowfin is mad about those shadows. Um, Let's see here. What are what is a good way of getting at silhouettes? What do you mean by that? What's a good way of getting at silhouettes? Hmm. Okay, dog game um, is delayed. <laughs> we worked on it a lot this year, but it's delayed. Um, let's see here. Have you ever used Affinity instead of Photoshop? No, what's Affinity? Affinity? Photoshop. Award-winning photo editing software. No, I haven't. Oh, it looks like it's a subscription, so it's not free. Oh, no, it says no subscription. <laughs> oh, no, you have to buy it. I see. I see. No, I haven't. 3D Printer Academy loves Affinity. Okay, good. Good to know. Okay, talk about how to secure your IP and copyright things. Well, in America, you don't have to do anything, really. I mean, like... Assuming you're not like a corporation and you have this massive trademark, um, whatever you make is copyrighted by default, okay? So for example, this sticky note is officially copyrighted. That's mine. You're not allowed to use that. I'm not a lawyer, but that's, that's the general, uh, general idea of copyright, okay? Everything I just made, you can't just take it. Um, cause it's, it's like, it's all about like, uh, could you, in a court of law, could you prove that Thomas made it? Yes, you could. Therefore it's copyrighted. I could prove if uh, fatal destiny, I'm just going to pick a random person. If fatal destiny decided to use that chess artwork and say that it's mine, I would go, Hey, judge, jury, look at this stream. It's clearly mine. I'm going to sue. Right? So fatal destiny, sorry. You're going to lose that one. That's right. 3D Printer Academy says it's basically common law. Correct. Um, how much do I bench? I don't really bench much anymore because my shoulder blew out two years ago. Or just It just kept getting worse. I don't know if it blew out. So, But about, I know my max was about 270, 280. Do you use a lawyer for your game's copyrights? I do not use lawyers for copyrights because copyrights are default, generally. What I do use lawyers for is scrubbing through contracts and looking for the poison pills when I work with publishers. And, and you know, if a publisher has a, has, a, has a dark clause in the contract, 
it's not there it's not because they're mean it's just they're gonna try and get the best deal and so you want to make sure your lawyer looks through it and finds it okay okay is the twisted tower publisher in the bag yet um, can't talk about that do I need a beautiful do I need to be beautiful to have a Nintendo switch dev kit yes um, any good any good stuff on okay how do you recommend to get good at paying attention to the silhouettes of characters how do you balance it what do you mean oh I see a great character has a good silhouette well oftentimes you could just create a good silhouette completely from generic features right Thomas brush we can make a cool silhouette for Thomas brush you want me to do it guys I'm gonna show it to you okay it's not like I'm particularly unique I just have a head and hair but you can take the the dramatic features and make a silhouette okay you just do it and you got yourself a silhouette okay there's my head and then my That's my hand and my arm, see? There you go, guys. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you can really create a silhouette uh, out of any sort of feature. You just make, make extreme stuff. Like if, if, like if your character has big glasses if you needed a silhouette and let's say glasses were the feature i can imagine you could do it with the silhouette you know you could let's see if we could try it we'll see i could be wrong here but like anything you can make a silhouette out of as long as you make it extreme um he's it's kind of like logo design um let's see if we can do it there's his glasses and then i'm going to do his eyes This one you'd really have to be more careful about. Yeah, I guess there's certain things you just can't do. Like this is tough. That's a little bit better right there. But it would go in front of his nose. But this isn't really a silhouette, is it? It's more of a logo. It's more of a logo. But yeah, that's a good question. I've never really thought about it. I've never really thought about it. So, I don't know. Keep trying, I guess. <laughs> Certain things are tough. That one's tough. Uh, okay. Nathan, Nathan Cuevas says, Thomas, I need advice, man. He said, man, I'm broke, but I found people to help me out with my game. If I decided to make a Kickstarter, what should I do since the team will, will know I got money? Wait, what? I'm broke, but found people to help me. If I decided to make a Kickstarter, what should I do since the team will know I got money? You should, you should sign a contract that says they get nothing. If they want to help out, they're helping out. And if, you, if you're okay giving them money, then that needs to be in the contract too. Fences make good neighbors, right? So this is Thomas, your dad talking. Get a freaking contract, even if you're doing free work, because it won't be free in the end, especially if the game makes a million bucks. Can you upload a game, for example, your first trash game? This is from Jonas. Can you upload your first trash game without doing anything on the legal end? Or will you have to be fear of being sued? No, you don't have to be afraid of getting sued. Guys, everything, everyone acts like a, there's like there's like something that happens when you get a lawyer. It's like, ooh, now I'm now I'm good. It's like, no. Did you steal anything? No. Did I did I use anything I wasn't supposed to use? No. So why on earth would I get sued? Um, and even if, even if like, for example, you did get in trouble, uh, like if, for example, if you got sued for stealing something, let's say you did steal something, an LLC is not gonna protect you. You're still gonna get sued. Um, now.
It's me, KLC, says, pay your team, bro. Well, I pay my team. I don't know who you're talking to. I pay my team. Um, but um, when you're first starting out and you have people who want to help and do stuff pro bono, you still need a contract. And if they want money from Kickstarter, ooh, where's the money? Then that should have been declared right away before you even did a Kickstarter. You need a contract that says you will get 10% of the Kickstarter proceeds. Does that make sense? I, I'm not a big fan of when people make money, then everyone starts, starts asking for money. It's, it's disingenuous. Like if I, if I had a friend, I was like, dude, I want to help you make, make this game. And he's like, sure. And then I help him. And then he comes to me two years later and says, where's my money? You made a million bucks. The truth is you never talked about it. You never said it. So why would you expect to make some money, right? Um, so it, it, what I'm saying is you need to talk about this stuff before you even make a penny because your friendship's going to implode when you start making money. Money destroys friendships like nothing else. And that's why you write it out. Write it out in a contract. That's great. It's me, KLC. I don't know. KLC says, I don't know, Thomas. If money comes in, I would share it with the people who helped me along the way. That's the godly way. Well, yeah, but there's also the just way, which is sure, that's, that's generous, but there was never a contract. And so it won't hold up in a court of law, right? There's gonna be, there's gonna be some, you gotta, you, I'm, what I'm saying is you've got to clarify this stuff at the beginning. Don't rely on generosity to keep your friendship afloat. Don't rely on generosity. And if you're, for example, if you're gonna contract work, if you're going to contract work and you're the contractor and you're going to help somebody out or if you're going to if you're going to give your services to somebody else but you say you just want to help and you never ask for money don't suddenly go to that person a year later and expect to get paid you need to write it out everything needs to be in a contract tanvir i'm going to ban you if you ask that again okay minima oh man now i can get 10 or what am I going to do? 10? No, five Big Macs. No, I could, I could do 10. I could probably get 10 Big Macs. Thank you so much, Minima. I am showing preferential treatment to people who pay me. I've been watching for a few years. Keep up the hard works and thank you for all the entertainment knowledge over the years. Minima, thank you so much. KLC says, I agree with both sides. I'm talking about it from the leads side. Your other fan said he got money from the Kickstarter. Yeah, and if you get money from the Kickstarter, but someone dabbled and helped you out, it's, you don't by default owe them money. It's the nice thing to do, sure, but it doesn't just... I guess all I'm saying is write it out in a contract. That's all I'm saying. Just write it out. <laughs> um, you need a contract before you even let somebody touch your code. Um, you need a... a uh, a services agreement and you just get one from rocket lawyer um, no I can't critique any more game art guys um, my lamp looks like a big geezer with a hat it does what are you talking about oh look I've also got I've got a ton of pictures of clowns Isn't that cool
So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, oh. But anyway, um, it's just been something I've been really, oh. Cheers. So that's about all. Um, sorry, let me put this away here. So that's about all that I have for you guys today. You know, I, I oh, sorry. <clears throat> so all in all, I just wanted to show you guys 2D art, keep you posted on all the different things that we can do with color. Color is your best friend. Color is your best friend. 3D Printer Academy, no I am not. I stopped that a long time ago because I'm kind of opposed to it. Um, okay, anything else guys? Any other questions? I tried using Unity, it was frustrating, so I abandoned it. Do you think I should try using Unity again? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Cool, K North says that this has been uh, really helpful, these streams, so that's good. <laughs> Definitely see the importance of color. Yeah, color is your best friend. My wife is great. All right, guys, be sure to check out the link below if you want to join the program to learn more about 2D art. You'll learn a ton, I promise. Um, check that out below. 50% uh, off for 